right what is up happy sunday to whoever may be alive weekly update today uh we are still training that gpt 7b model on the orca data set it has been about a week now and we're at 15 percent churning slowly i expect in the next month this will finish training and i expect the results to be horrible it is a baby model i don't have high hopes for this i just want to see what one pass through does on a baby model so yeah but today let's take a look at the very promising train and llm with a single prompt the gpt llm trainer by m schumer it is a jupiter notebook so we're going to want to set that up and give it a try so i got a quick uh, kind of installation i don't even know if we can call these instructions but here are the things that you want to make sure you got set up you want to prepare your system what do you need you need a jupiter notebook and you need an open ai api key jupiter notebook easiest way to get that is to just install anaconda but you can go ahead and click this towards data science link and it'll give you some pretty good instructions i do have a video on on installing anaconda it's one of my first ones and it still holds up today i think it's pretty good all right so the next thing we want to do is clone the repo you can put it anywhere i'm going to put it in the root and it's just as simple as git clone and control shift v assuming you have copied the repo link just go to the github page hit the code drop down and copy that you should already know how to do this hit enter and boom there we go all right so we have prepared the system and we've cloned the repo so to open up a folder as a jupyter notebook we simply need to type in Jupyter Notebook and the folder we want to open, which in this case is the GPT LLM Trainer. Now remember, if you have installed Jupyter Notebook through Anaconda, it defaults to the base environment. But if you want to use your own environment for whatever reason, if you want to use a different one, you can kinda install Jupyter, run that, and it'll install it in the environment. So let's open up this notebook and see what we got. All right, had to change clothes, uh, feeling a little bit better. Um, we have opened opened up the folder as a notebook and we have our notebook right here. The extension IPYNB for IPython notebook is the extension that lets you know that it is ready to run in Jupyter. I'm going to control click it so it opens up in a new tab. It probably would have done that anyway. And here we go. All we're going to need to do is change the key to our OpenAI API key, which we will get from the open API website. We can go here, create a new secret key. I'll call this the GPT trainer demo create secret key you don't want to share this because anyone whoever sees this can use this and run up a tab on your account i'm going to delete this as soon as i publish the video so i have that copied i'm going to go into the jupyter notebook i am going to paste the key where it should be and we should be good to go all right looks like it's going pretty well i just changed the prompt to not respond in spanish and just respond in english but this is basically exactly what i'm looking for a model that takes in a puzzle like reasoning heavy question in English and responds with a well-reasoned step-by-step -step thought out response. Remember, we are looking to create a data set to train a model to work with logic puzzles. This is a good way to get a lot of data, but the end goal is to find a way to have an algorithm that can check the logic and validate it. So although we'll be able to make uh, some question and responses, it's pretty hard to validate the data itself uh, for quality um, without solving the problem yourself. That's why a lot of the data sets are text-based and and not really, you're not seeing these used for mathematics that much. Um, especially logic. Uh, so what is normally done is either you get a bunch of logic problems that have already been solved or you actually, that is the only thing that's been done. So here to get GPT to generate logic problems, you can assume that they're pretty good, but I would like to be able to check them. And I think that is required to be able to use this in any meaningful way. So right now we are generating examples. I had it generate a hundred, which is the default, which is nowhere near enough. We're going to want to bump that up to 10,000 at some point, but let's see how this does it looks like it's putting one out every 20 seconds so this shouldn't take too long all right so it looks like the loop was generating too fast there is a limit that OpenAI has specified for 10,000 tokens a minute it was saying please try again in six milliseconds so I just imported time I went ahead and did time dot sleep and I'll have it wait one second after every single example I also added a print statement here so that I can see the examples as they come out in case it doesn't finish and I don't want to wait for all of them so we can look at the examples and move on with our lives. Praise job. Okay, so it timed out again. My initial fix here is to now have it sleep every five generations and it hasn't timed out yet, but it probably will because it was saying that it was generating 10,000 tokens a minute. 
but five examples was only producing fit only produced fifth uh, a thousand five hundred tokens and the 12 examples was somewhere around three thousand so perhaps it's passing in the entire generation back into the prompt and that plus the system context that we can't see and potentially some other instructions that we can't see might be bumping that up to 10,000 somehow but I think there may be another issue that we might have to debug so stay tuned for that but other than that the prompts look pretty good they look pretty good a jar contains five red marbles three blue marbles and two green marbles if a marble is drawn at random what is the probability that it is either red or blue fortunately that's pretty similar to the question here a box contains 12 red balls 15 blue balls and 18 green balls if a ball is picked at random what is the probability that it's not green you can see that these are pretty simple um not that complicated easy to check but still require checking and that's the main problem that i was trying to use some kind of logical argument to solve uh all of these mathematic problems require require a person to hand check every single response and answer which is kind of annoying unlike a generation if you're just having it generate a story or generate text you don't really have to verify that it's valid because validity is kind of up to interpretation. So hopefully this doesn't time out and it did. So let's see if we can come up with another solution. All right, so we are back. We had to, you know, ask query uh, GPT-4 a little bit and this model collapse is really not a joke. Um, the, the responses from GPT-4, I haven't really been using it that much uh, for anything other than uh, actually modifying code. And usually when I'm modifying code, I'm doing something like this where I already know the answer and I just kind of wanted to type it for me. So I haven't really been looking at the responses, but in this case, I wanted it to actually do some debugging and it just sucks. This is 10 times worse than it was about six months ago. Model collapse, serious problem, but we were able to get a little solution here. We got to try and accept. So if we do get a rate limit, which has happened, we have it wait 10 seconds and it seems to do fine and continue. I also have a print here so that we can print the number of tokens and it looks like we're getting pretty close to 10,000 tokens. So we are going to have to wait for 10 seconds a lot but it looks like it finished it generated all 100 examples and we're good to go loaded the data set and we have another error here all right so again we still have errors things are this code is not complete by any means all right so it looks like uh without specifying the features there it was having trouble loading the data set so we specified the features and it is currently running um this is pretty much enough for me i don't really want it to run inference but we will go ahead and uh finish this up make sure everything runs and i will post the additions in the github all right so here we are it is about 24 hours later um i haven't been working the whole 24 hours but we have a solution here unfortunately if you've watched the stream you would know that the problem was actually just improper specification of the file path and i think also up here the data set name probably is incorrect but right now it's running uh, and i'm not using the uh, jupyter notebook anymore i have moved everything to a few python files i will go ahead and upload this to the github and we will move from there all right same day different clothes for whatever reason i don't know but we went ahead and moved everything over to some local python files i think i said native that's not the right word um and we have the github up here this looks pretty good let's not lie to ourselves this almost looks like a like a like something you'd see so um that's good to go this video is complete garbage i understand i'm gonna post another video that's gonna actually explain uh how it's just gonna go through this really quickly and be more of an official video that i may attach to the readme uh to make this look even better so stay tuned for that peace